Thank you. Uh, Chairman McSally, Ranking Member Cortez Masto, and members of the subcommittee. My name is Pat Terrell. I am the Wyoming State Engineer and Wyoming Governor's Representative uh, to the Colorado River. I wish to express Wyoming's and the Upper Basin's support for the DCPs you've heard about, developed in a consensus manner by seven basin states over roughly the last six years. The Colorado River Basin has been experiencing severe drought since 2000, longer and more severe than was considered during the development of the 2007 interim guidelines. We now know that those operating rules cannot sufficiently address one of the worst drought cycles ever seen. The seven Colorado River Basin states working with the Department of Interior have carefully developed a plan which is a complex compromise that helps protect critical reservoir elevations in both Lakes Powell and Lake Mead, thereby benefiting the entire river basin. Implementation cannot begin until the agreements have been executed by all parties, which is predicated upon securing legislative authorization. The DCPs will provide an opportunity, a bridge, for the basin states, federal government, and other key stakeholders to collaborate in a longer-term set of sustainable solutions for managing the river until 2026, when the 07 guidelines are renegotiated. The DCPs are the only plans that will reduce the probability that both reservoirs will decline to critically low elevations, which could occur as early as 2021. We see two ways to respond to this severe drought in the short term. One is to watch it happen and risk unilateral secretarial action in the lower basin and dispassionate mandatory regulation of uses in the upper basin. The other way is to authorize the DCPs, which expand concepts outlined in the 2007 interim guidelines, lay lighter upon our water users, and are a product of collaboration and consensus. In either case, if drought continues, some water uses will be reduced. As a water manager, I'm compelled to offer my water users the second alternative, a drought plan developed with water users and contractors and which avoids heavy government intervention and mandatory curtailment is what DCP represents. The Upper Basin cannot fail to satisfy the 1922 Compact's 75 million acre feet in 10 years obligation at Lee Ferry below Lake Powell. Additionally, we have never had to implement the difficult curtailment provisions of the 1948 Upper Colorado River Basin Compact in the face of a looming violation, but we know it will be difficult. The risk of, risk of under or over-regulating is significant. The Upper Basin DCP helps sustain critical elevations at Lake Powell and compliance with the 22 Compact while avoiding or reducing mandatory curtailment of, of Upper Basin water uses. The first tool in the Upper Basin Plan is the Drought Response Operations Agreement, which establishes a process where we can move water already stored in Lake Powell to protect critical elevations. To Lake Powell, excuse me. If it reaches those critical elevations, the hydraulic ability to release water is jeopardized. If we cannot get water past that dam, we violate the compact. Additionally, if that power pool elevation is breached, we lose the ability to generate hydropower and funding for operations, critical environmental programs related to endangered fish and salinity, and power resources for customers and the grid are risked. Even without the agreement, the Bureau will seek to move uncommitted storage from its upstream initial unit reservoirs to prevent that from happening. If drought operations are ever needed, the agreement provides a process of outreach to our stakeholders to influence how that movement of water will occur and requires its subsequent recovery of water levels in those reservoirs. We have committed that those activities will occur under existing NEPA analyses, records of decisions, and other authorities already in place. Our second tool is a demand management storage agreement Demand management cannot generate, we've learned, enough water in one year to mitigate a compact curtailment event if one is required, so the storage space authorized through the agreement is critical to its success. If the upper division states conclude after study that a demand management program is feasible, we can incentivize, uh, and we can incentivize the program to ensure participation, the temporary voluntary reduction of existing consumptive use in the basin would provide water to be released when needed to help assure compliance with the 22 Compact. The 
Colorado River Basin needs the DCPs implemented. Now, um, Madam Chairman, I see I'm out of time, and if you like, I will stop right there. I missed a little bit, but I'll, I'll quit right there. Sorry, if you want to just summarize or wrap up, I'll give you a few more seconds. Thank you. <clears throat> the Colorado River Basin needs the DCPs implemented now. The plans were developed through years of collaboration, compromise, and consensus, and function within the rigorous environmental analysis, review, and permitting processes that have already been completed. The plans require the passage of federal legislation to become effective. We request your support in adopting that legislation as soon as possible. Great. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Terrell.